Hello everyone and welcome to another video. This is my 2015 MacBook Air. I got it a couple months ago from eBay for around 77 US dollars and I already made a video about it. You should watch it if you haven't done so already, but I'll give you a quick summary. This is a base model 2015 MacBook Air with a dual core Intel Core i5 processor with a base clock of 1.6 GHz. That is coupled with 4 GB of DDR3 memory, as well as 128 GB of SSD storage. It runs ok on macOS, but it definitely shows its age. So let's check out how it would perform on macOS, and let's maybe subscribe to my channel so I can make more videos. You have two ways of running Windows on a MacBook. You either run it as a virtual machine, or you install Windows alongside macOS. Running it as a virtual machine is easier, but you'll sacrifice some performance, and we already don't have a lot of it. That leaves us with installing Windows alongside macOS. macOS has a built-in program called the Bootcamp Assistant that's going to be helping us throughout this process. The only thing that you need to do before opening the Assistant is to download the Windows 10 ISO, and you can get it directly from Microsoft. It takes around 45 minutes from the time you open the Assistant to the moment you see the Windows desktop. During the installation, you'll need to allocate some space for the Windows partition. Do keep in mind that you can't resize this partition later on, so make sure that you leave enough space for Windows and your applications, as well as enough space for your stuff on the macOS partition. As this MacBook only has 128GB of storage, the most I could do was 59GB. I received a couple random errors here and there during the installation process, but I ultimately managed to install Windows on this MacBook. When you boot in the Windows for the very first time, you'll see the installation screen for the bootcamp drivers. Do not skip on these, as these drivers contain Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, as well as keyboard shortcut drivers. I was also surprised to see that Apple still issues updates for these drivers. Let's start with day-to-day -day use. The boot time is around 30 seconds, which is understandable for a MacBook from 2015. If you switch between macOS and Windows often, you'll end up forgetting which key to press to copy and paste stuff. On Windows, obviously it's Ctrl-C, and on macOS, it's Command-C. The way macOS works, they don't really take advantage of the Control key, so the layout does not favor Control. So it's quite hard to press it when you're actually typing stuff. You might end up pressing Alt or Command or Function instead of Control. You'll get used to this eventually, but just something to keep in mind. The trackpad works fine for the most part as well, but as it's not a Windows Precision trackpad, you don't get to use these advanced three-finger swipe functions. Similarly, you also don't get to use most of these advanced swipe features that you would normally find on macOS. The only thing you get is a two-finger swipe and two-finger press to right-click. You can also configure some aspects of the trackpad using the Bootcamp Assistant app, but the features that you have are fairly limited. Using this MacBook on Windows for daily tasks is a much better experience than I initially thought. I did some light web browsing and text editing, and I quickly realized that it's much faster and smoother than macOS. Apple clearly optimized newer versions of macOS for newer MacBooks, and it shows. 1080p YouTube playback wasn't a problem either. For what it's worth, this MacBook does not have a 1080p screen, but still. To see the limits of this MacBook, I opened 7 tabs on Chrome. One of them was 1080p YouTube, and another was 720p Crave. I switched between these tabs to see if any of them would need to be reloaded, but to my surprise, they all stayed there as I was switching between tabs. It also stayed rather quiet in this scenario, definitely quieter than macOS. For what it's worth, the CPU usage fluctuated between 50 to 100%, while the RAM usage stayed around 80%. If you want to use this computer as a daily driver, I suggest you don't check these metrics. To spice things up a little, I then opened two tabs on Microsoft Edge, and that's when I started seeing some slowdowns. This poor MacBook was clearly trying to catch its breath, and the two tabs that I wanted to open, Amazon and eBay, they took their time. And when those tabs finally loaded, I realized that some tabs on Chrome needed to be reloaded. 
I then replaced Edge with Microsoft Word to see how text processing would perform in a multitasking scenario. Microsoft Word has been on the buggier side for me lately, and I got some bugs here as well as I noticed some lags. However, I noticed these lags when working on this computer as well, so it's not necessarily related to this MacBook in particular. Throughout this experiment, my 1080p YouTube playback never got interrupted, which was a nice surprise. By the way, watching content from other platforms like Netflix, Prime Video, and Disney Plus wasn't a problem either. A couple years ago, I made a video about running Windows on a 2019 MacBook Pro, and one of my biggest complaints there was the fact that it was loud. The fans would spin at high RPMs all the time, and that was mainly because that MacBook had a discrete graphics unit. As this MacBook doesn't have a discrete graphics unit, this wasn't a problem. In fact, I'm pretty sure this MacBook runs quieter on Windows than it does on macOS. Honestly, for daily tasks, I don't see why you wouldn't install Windows on a MacBook from this era. macOS is definitely more resource intensive than Windows, at least on these Macs. On the other hand, if you were planning on installing Windows on a MacBook like this to play some games, let me tell you well in advance that it won't work. First and foremost, you'll run into a storage issue. After installing Windows and the Office Suite, I only have 23 GB of free storage available. Fortunately, I have a portable SSD that I can install games on, but your mileage may vary. Installing Steam was fine, but when you try to open it, both the CPU and the RAM usage go to around 90%. I get this, as Steam is not a super light program, but it's just not a good way to start a test. I first tried Counter-Strike 2, but it took around 5 minutes for the game to show me the main screen. There were also some rendering issues, but I looked past them. I ultimately managed to start playing, but it was just a slideshow. I then tried Euro Truck Simulator 2, because why not? My experience there was a little bit better, but I still wouldn't call this playable. Again, we're talking about a 9-year-old thin and light laptop without a discrete graphics unit. You might have realized by now that I'm talking about Windows 10 and not 11. This is because the Bootcamp Assistant on this MacBook doesn't officially support Windows 11. If you still want to install it though, you need to first follow my steps and install Windows 10, and then follow the upgrade path to Windows 11. Do keep in mind that Windows 11 doesn't officially support this processor, so you'll need to modify the installation media a little bit. I personally didn't do this as I saw no benefit in installing Windows 11 as opposed to Windows 10 on this MacBook. I replaced the battery on this MacBook a couple months ago, and I managed to get around 7 hours of battery life on macOS. On Windows, I'm able to get around 6 hours, which is not bad at all. For the last couple of months, I've been running macOS on this MacBook, and my experience was less than fantastic. I'm very happy to report that Windows runs much better on macOS on this MacBook. Yes, it only has 4GB of RAM and 128GB of storage, but I still see a lot of use cases for this laptop. You can keep it as a secondary just-in-case laptop, or you can use it to take notes and stuff in school. If your job requires that you connect to a remote machine, this will work just fine. Honestly, I'm just glad that I don't have to get rid of it and that I can find a use case for it. Thank you so much for watching. Please consider liking this video if you liked it, subscribing to my channel, and checking out my other videos. Take care.